Good day to everyone. I am Nicolas Bornos of Capital Inc. and I'm delighted to welcome you to Capital Inc.'s Trending News uh, podcast series. We have the privilege to uh, have with us today uh, Matt Peter Zacco, the CEO of uh, Navigator Gas, uh, and uh, we are going to discuss the company's recent developments uh, and sector outlook following their uh, recent uh, quarterly earnings. Uh, as a reminder, Navigator Holdings is the owner and operator of the world's largest fleet of handy-sized liquefied gas carriers and a global leader in the seaborne transportation services of petrochemical gases such as ethylene and ethane, liquefied petroleum gas LPG, and ammonia. The company's fleet consists of 56 semi or fully refrigerated liquefied gas carriers, 25 of which are ethylene and ethane capable. And also, Navigator owns a 50% share through a joint venture in an ethylene export marine terminal at Morgan's Point in Texas on the House on Ship Channel in the US. And Navigator Gas is a common stock trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol NVGS. As a quick reminder that uh, our uh, podcasts are purely for informational and educational services. They do not constitute investment advice or advice of any kind. And as further disclosure, Capital Link has a great privilege to work with Navigator Gas on uh, investor relations. So, Matt, welcome to the uh, podcast, to the webinar. And thank you me, so much. Thank you for, uh, for being with us. Let me start with the first question. Navigator Gas reported total operating revenue of 146.7 million and EBITDA of 77.6 million for the three months ended June 30, 2024. This was a record quarter for both metrics. So what were the key factors driving these financial and operational results? Yeah, indeed, it was a, a great quarter that we just ended with the record result, and we were very pleased with it. Um, it was mainly driven by the top line. It was really the revenue that, that drove the result. We saw our revenues being up 8% year on year. And, uh, and the reason behind that is that we saw our time charter rates at 29,500 up from 27,200 in the same quarter the year before. So quite robust increase in time charter rates. We saw our utilization. So that's the time when our ships are carrying cargo came up to 93% up from 89% in, in the same quarter the year before. So uh, we were busy, uh, the ships were busy and, and carrying a lot of cargo. So we saw robust de demand across all our commodities, mainly ethylene, ethane, other pet chems and ammonia. Well, you open the door to the next question. Can you briefly share with us your take on the outlook of these markets? I mean, you you carry a number of petrochemical gases. So what is uh, the outlook for the rest of the year and, and maybe for beyond? Yeah, we're, we're quite confident about the, the outlook for the year. We think uh, demand remains good. It's uh, supported by the growing production of natural gas liquids, uh, particularly in the North America uh, where uh, shale gas production keeps growing. Uh, North American natural gas liquids are the lowest cost produced barrels in the world. Uh, they are very cost competitive. Um, so so the demand will be there once it's produced. We are expanding our terminal. So we expect that much more ethylene will be available for sea transport, which is also gonna support our markets. And uh, we see that the supply is constrained by a low new building order book, and we see a rapidly aging world fleet. So that means that uh, demand is growing, supply is, is stable, and that's of course uh, supporting the overall market outlook. We, we continue to renew our expiring time charters at higher rates, and we remain pretty confident that this positive development is gonna continue over the year to come. Thank you. Now, let me move on to the next question. Navigator has reduced uh, its debt by 35.1 million in the last quarter, bringing total debt down to 826.2 million. More importantly, as you mentioned in your, uh, in your earnings, uh, the company has steadily decreased its net debt to EBITDA from 7.5 times in 2019, down to a record low of 2.3 times currently. 
So can you discuss how this reduction aligns with uh, Navigator Holdings' broader financial strategy and the company's leverage goals and liquidity position? Yeah. Uh, we have paid down debt for a few years now, and it's been driven by the strong cash flow generation that we've seen. I mean, we generated almost $300 million of EBITDA over the past four quarters. And that in itself, of course, opens up for uh, deployment of that cash generation into reducing our debt. And that's what we've done. Uh, we will continue to pay off our existing facilities. And we'll also be doing some refinancing where we'll take out new debt to, to replace the, the existing. So... Uh, all else equal, you will probably see that that we'll continue to reduce our existing debt. I mean, we'll continue also returning capital to our shareholders, both through cash dividends and share buybacks. And we, you will also see us investing into growth. So our aim is to grow, to return capital, but also maintain our strong balance sheet. Um, I think if we go forward, we should have room to expand our debt position somewhat. We have an exceedingly strong balance sheet right now. Um, and, and, and I think we should prioritize the, uh, the growth part and also the capital uh, redistribution as, as well, uh, and not so much reducing debt further. I think we're very comfortable where we are and, and maybe even interested in making our balance sheet a little bit more efficient by maybe taking on more debt to, to grow the top line. Very interesting. I, I have a question uh, down the line on capital allocation and capital return. But uh, first of all, let, let me ask you uh, another recent development. Navigator Gash has recently secured uh, a 147.6 million term loan and revolving credit facility with a sustainability linked adjustment. So can you explain how this facility aligns with your financial and uh, environmental strategies and what specific measures are you implementing to meet this environmental criteria as set out in uh, the agreement? Yeah, no, it's true. We just did the right refinancing and announced it. It was done at very attractive terms. It's a six-year facility at a 190 basis points margin. Um, this is a significant margin reduction compared to the debt that it's replacing. We aim to continue optimizing our balance sheet and lower our cap, our cost of capital through uh, refinancings like the ones that, that you just saw here. We're very pleased that it also here in, in this one includes an incentive for us to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, and rem I remind you also here that, that we had the same uh, feature in our earlier refinancing. So we, we're strongly committed to doing that. Um, and that just shows how much we care about uh, reducing emissions. And, and we see the same with our financing banks. They're quite interested in us putting these features in because we, we're fully aligned on, on this uh, road forward. We have invested decisively into energy efficiency on our existing fleet. This year, we are going to dry dock 18 vessels and we'll be installing 10 new technologies on each of these vessels during the dry dock period. It's such things as uh, optimized uh, propeller designs, uh, it's uh, hull designs, it's around anti-fouling paint, but it's also routing optimization software and the like. So, so we're investing a lot into it and, and we, we believe that we are on a, a good trajectory towards being entirely uh, zero emitting by 2050. Thank you very much. So now going to the next question, with the declaration of a cash dividend, and the planned repurchase of approximately 2.3 million in common stock, how does Navigator intend to balance the return of capital to shareholders with reinvestments in the company's growth and operational needs? And of course, you mentioned about uh, your position regarding uh, that. Yeah, no, we, we can most certainly do both. Uh, we return 25% of our quarterly net earnings to shareholders, either through dividends or, or share buybacks. And on top of that, we have opportunistically bought back 5% of our shares twice in the past uh, 10 months. So in total, 10% of our shares out through share buybacks. On top of this, 25% uh, of net earnings for each quarter. So, you know, so far, the, the capital return has placed no restriction on our growth initiatives. We've had the cash position and the balance sheet to, to do both. Um, 
that's maybe also because we are quite selective in our growth initiatives. I mean, we only engaged in projects that are robust and value generating. So, uh, so, so far it's not been constraining us in our um, eagerness in, in growing our existing business. So uh, we'll continue doing both. Thank you. Now, moving on to the next question. It sounds like the ethylene export terminal expansion is on time and on budget. So will the expansion be complete by the end of the year with full operational, uh, with full operations, uh, or uh, is there going to be a ramp up period? And also, can you provide some color on the potential timing and scale of the off-date contracts for the expansion? Yeah, I can I can certainly confirm that the project is on on track right now. The equipment is now starting to be put together on site, and and we expect that that commissioning it'll be complete by mid December of this year. So in reality, when you look at it, it's it's not very uh, far into the future. It's only a couple of months from now. But but still, we have uh, laid out the plan together with enterprise, and we've stuck to it, and and it seems to be developing exactly at, as it was designed. Um, we expect that the ramp up uh, will be fast. We expect that the volumes will start flowing from January 1st. So it's a it's a pretty short commissioning period uh, before it, it starts flowing. Um, when it comes to the contracts side, we've had the first offtake contract signed. Uh, we have another that is agreed commercially, and we expect that that will be signed imminently. So already uh, uh, some some good traction on the on the offtake, and we expect that the full capacity of of the expansion will be contracted by December. Um, I think the last time around, and that was all the way back in in nineteen, we we saw that uh, uh, suddenly once the, uh, the 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 beans were spilled, once the first customers uh, started to to sign up, then uh, it it filled up pretty quickly, and and we'll expect the same will happen here. That once now that the first contracts have been signed, we we expect that the uh, remaining potential customers will be fast to get off the fence. Thank you. Let me move on to uh, to a new development that you announced uh, that Navigator Gas has committed two and a half million to the 1008 energy project with the potential, as you mentioned, for a larger investment up to 100 million. So what is the strategic importance of this investment for Navigator Gas, particularly in relation to the existing ammonia shipping business and the broader and the broader energy transition? Yeah. It's uh, it's a 2.5 million investment as you, as you just mentioned. So it's in in the greater scheme of things, it's it's not a very large investment, and it's also not one uh, that will start paying off cash flow uh, over the next uh, few years. So it is a bit of a long term investment, and it's really buying an a very important option into investing the 100 million to into the marine logistics uh, of, of the terminal. So it has significant strategic importance for us here because it can help kickstart the clean ammonia market. Uh, we obviously a large ammonia transporter today. We have about 10 ships on the water at any given point in time transporting ammonia. And we don't think there's any shipping company that has more ships uh, transporting ammonia than we have. So we build up our capabilities and our capacity over time. And, and, and we think we are an attractive uh, counterpart or partner in the ammonia market. We've also done the first ship to ship transfer of ammonia. So we are in many ways showing that ammonia can be safely bunkered on board a ship uh, so it can be used for marine fuel. So we were aiming here to create an ammonia push effect. So bringing ammonia to the world market, uh, because you've heard a lot of discussions around uh, ammonia as a, as a shipping fuel. Um, uh, you know, who will provide the logistics? Where, where's the product going to come from? And then we're trying to, to answer those questions. Uh, I think it's, it's strongly supportive to our existing strong foothold in the ammonia shipping market. And, and we hope that it's going to build to become something much bigger than it is right now. We see the, the total potential for ammonia as a, as a commodity for us to be very significant. And it plays really well into our uh, strategic aim that we will be uh, transporting uh, a big proportion of, 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 of the cargoes that we carry that are uh, non-fossil in, in the years to come. 
you already answered uh, in a way the, the next question that I had in mind to ask you, um, staying on the same topic, but you had mentioned exactly about the integrated service of clean ammonia production and seaborne transportation that uh, Navigator Gas and 1008 aim to provide. So how do you envision this integrated approach enhancing the competitiveness and sustainability of uh, Navigator Gas in the global shipping industry, especially considering the increasing regulatory pressures coming from the IMO and the, the uh, EU? Yeah, I, I think this integrated approach that we take, it has many advantages for, for Navigator and also for its customers. And I think we've proven that in the ethylene export terminal that we have together with Enterprise and, and we we aim to, to do something similar on ammonia. So when we have this integrated uh, approach, it's going to mean better safety, that we can better plan ahead. Uh, and, and, and that has an, a very large and important impact on, on how safely we can conduct our, our operations. It's going to add to the efficiency, and that means lower cost for our customers. And it's also going to add to improving our reliability so that we have the ships at the right place, in, in the right place at the right time, uh, also to the benefit of our customers. So, so safety, efficiency, and reliability are all uh, benefiting from this uh, integrated approach. Um, it's going to make our business sustainable uh, also after the energy transition has, has taken place. We'll be transporting non-fossil products, including clean ammonia and CO2. Uh, so, so this will all uh, help us in, in building and preparing for that. We hope and expect that the EU and the IMO will implement very ambitious global regulation to accelerate the energy transition um, and that's going to bring very, very exciting opportunities for Navigator and, uh, well, save the planet at the same time. So what's not to like? Thank you. Thank you very much. So the moving on to the next question, the recent secondary public offering saw BW Group selling 7 million shares, trimming their position by a third, and Navigator Gas to be purchasing half of them, so 3.5 million shares for $51 million. So what was the strategic rationale behind this move and how does it align with the company's long-term goals? And maybe here you can uh, clarify these shares that you bought back. Are they held in treasury? Are they being canceled? Uh, yeah, they, 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 they have been canceled. So, so that means that the total share count has, has gone down uh, accordingly. We were very pleased with BW's initiative to, to sell 7 million of their shares, bringing them from holding around 30% of our shares to, to just over 20%, uh, mainly because it allowed us to repurchase shares at, at $14.52, uh, which we think was a, an attractive price when our net asset value is above $25. It's highly accretive to the Navigator shareholders in, in general. I think it also added significant new trading liquidity to our share through the three and a half million shares that were offered to, to new shareholders. It, it increased the number of new of shareholders in Navigator and, and it's also over the summer led to a significant increase in the, in the trading liquidity, which of course we, we welcome. Uh, we saw a very positive reception from the, spot, uh, from the stock market to the to the sell down and so so it seems that our investors and, and outside investors thought it was a, a good idea too so so i think this was a win 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 uh, for for navigator for bw and for the new shareholders great thank you so considering the current market conditions and the current operating environment what are the main challenges and opportunities that you foresee for navigator holdings and how is the company positioned to navigate through them effectively yeah, I I mean, you, you can worry about a lot of things these days. There's a lot of unrest around the world. I think for us, probably the, the big thing is that we, we depend a lot on global free trade. Um, and that means that when there is tension between global superpowers like China, like the, the US, I mean, it, it does bring a, a risk to our business. So we hope and we pray that that uh, sense will prevail that free trade will continue because we deeply believe that that is to the benefit of all uh, countries, all consumers, all people around the world. So, but we're also protecting ourselves from uh, what if if 
free trade is is challenged somehow and and we manage that risk through having this exposure that we talked about to several commodities to petrochemicals uh, um, ammonia ethylene ethane um etc etc cetera, et cetera. so so that means that if if there is a a tariff put on one product that that we have the ability to to transport another so so that will mitigate the effect on our business and and also the fact that we are trading globally so we are not uh, heavily exposed into you could say any trade lane uh, there is a lot of product being shipped by us from north america to asia but but that being said, it, it can go through other routes, and and us having that experience in in trading globally, I think that in many ways protect us from from the risk between any two company uh, countries becoming uh, upset with each other. Thank you. Now coming closer to the end of our discussion, uh, a key topic here is uh, you have uh, mentioned the uh, in terms of the capital deployment strategies at Navigator the five key strategic pillars that have shaped the company's strategy and uh, for the last uh, few years. And uh, just as a reminder to our listeners, that those five pillars are continue to reduce debt. The, uh, you began to pay, to pay dividends. You repurchased uh, uh, Navigator Common Shares. You renewed the fleet via sales and secondhand acquisitions. And you expanded the energy infrastructure business. So how have these five pillars influenced your operation in the past and what role do they play in the present and how do you see them evolving in the future in terms of affecting your uh, strategy and operations? No, I, I think that you should expect to see more of the same. I think those uh, five pillars that you mentioned here have worked really well. I think it, it shows that we are balancing uh, capital distribution to shareholders, growing the business and also uh, making our balance sheet and our our company more resilient. I mean, we are deeply committed to returning capital to shareholders and we are deeply committed to, to growing uh, and, and also maintaining our financial strength here. So, so I think when you, if you, if, if you ask about, so, so what does that mean for the future? I, I think that you'll see a, a navigator that will be the, the leading gas tanker owner and operator in the <clears throat> handy size and, and mid size uh, segment with a, a modern efficient fleet. You'll see a, a large infrastructure component to our portfolio. So we are expanding our Morgan's Point terminal and then we are also doing building now a, a similar project with uh, with 1008 so so we are aiming to to grow uh, the infrastructure part of our our EBITDA to let's say between a quarter and one third um, we're also aiming to to transport you could say up to a third of our cargoes that are non-fossil uh, in 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 2030 or so uh, co2 clean ammonia and and the like so we'll have a, a sustainable profile that will also make uh, us a, a large and, and growing company post the energy transition and then uh, i hope we'll see or i i strongly believe that we will see that these efforts in improving our energy efficiency will pay off and put us on track for for net zero by by 2050 so uh with that i hope that you'll see us being a, a top listed uh, us listed shipping company with uh, with strong uh, credentials on sustainability and corporate governance so so that's really my my vision and my expectations for for navigate over the next couple of years right so closing our discussion, uh, recently there has been a sizable transaction between Advanced Gas and uh, BWLPG in the very large gas carrier sector. Can you share with us your take on the industry consolidation? Yeah, no, I think consolidation is, is great. I think it's good for the shipping companies and I think it's good for the customers because when when consolidation happens, it's, it makes the shipping operations of those companies more efficient and more reliable through the scale that they are building. So I think it's that that's a great benefit for the customers. Um, and I think also it, it, it creates some some synergies for the companies. They're able to take cost out that will uh, potentially make them more profitable. So I think this is a, a, a win win. Uh, we would love to do something similar in, in our segment. Well, thank you very much. We had, uh, I think, a very insightful discussion. We covered a lot of topics in a fairly short period of time. So thank you. We have with us uh, Max Peter Zacco, the CEO of Navigator Gas. Max, thank you for being with us. Thank you for all the good questions and uh, for, for the discussion here.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.